Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we like to talk about different codes and standards as they relate to the solar and solar plus storage industries. And today I'm gonna to talk about microgrid systems and specifically we're gonna look at article 705 and at the end of 705 there's some stuff about microgrids. We're gonna break this into two different parts and so we're gonna talk about the first few today right now and then we will uh, talk about the other the second half of those that section uh, in a different video so as we're going through one of the things that's probably super helpful is you know we're talking about microgrids is to define what a microgrid is and this you will find a definition in article 100 and so it talks about you know a microgrid being an electric power system capable of uh, operating in island mode and capable of being interconnected to an electric power production and distribution network uh, and, it, and then it goes on you know saying uh, or other primary source while operating in interactive mode and so it has a little bit more talking about being able to disconnect and reconnect to the utility so don't necessarily need to you know read you verbatim that that definition you can go look at that if you need to but in short, a microgrid in the eyes of the NEC, we are we have power production sources, we have this primary source of power. They can operate together. They can also operate independently, they being the power production source. So in our case, a PV system with batteries, with storage, we may have other types of power production sources. We may have wind, we may have a generator, we may have all these different things. And so the microgrid, kind of the key here is that we have the ability to connect and disconnect and operate in island mode, and we're connected to that distribution network. So we are you know, part of the entire system where we're supplying power to some, some loads. They can be very small, very discreet. Uh, it could be relatively large. It could be a campus-wide thing. It could be a neighborhood or, you know, depending on how it's all put together, a microgrid could be, you know, an individual home it could and it could also be you know a much larger than that so 705.50 is where you're going to find kind of the start of talking about microgrid systems in relation to sep in 705 being the interconnection of power production sources and so you see here there's some changes in the language from 2020 and we have these interconnected microgrid systems. So systems that are, you know, we're specifically interconnecting with a utility, um, capable of operating in interactive mode with a primary source of power or electric utility or other electric power production or and distribution network. So microgrid systems shall be permitted to disconnect from other sources and operate in island mode. So this is all relatively, I would say kind of standard stuff and it's somewhat incorporating also what the definition is talking about um, but we're kind of setting the stage of what a microgrid can can and can't do and so again making that um, connection and disconnect from from the utility so we have these informational notes uh, talking about this and again inf informational notes are not part of co the code language they're there just exactly as that information so talking about include microgrid systems often include a single source or a com compatible interconnection of multiple sources. So they give us an example there, generators, PV systems, wind, ESS. So there's all of these different components uh, typically com comprise of the, mi make, make the microgrid uh, complete. Moving on in 705, there's a couple more sections gonna talk about here. So 705.60 talks about primary power source connection. And so, connections to the primary power sources that are external to the microgrid system shall comply with 705 11 12 or 13. and so initially so you know just talking about that first sentence there the connection to the main utility grid is what we're talking about in when we're looking at this kind of a picture where we're talking about multiple power sources we have solar wind generator uh, and then we have storage over there so all of those are, you know, that's our power production sources and our storage system. The interconnection external to the microgrid system as it's being talked about here in code would be that connection to the utility grid. So we're gonna have to follow 705, 11, 12, or 13, which you're probably pretty familiar with. These are our typical interconnection methods. So 705, 11 being making a connection on the supply side of a uh, service disconnecting means, 
12 is when we're connecting on the load side of that service disconnecting means and then 13 is you know we're looking at those power control systems and so any of those would be sufficient as long as we're meeting those requirements to interconnect our microgrid system just as we would say it just a straight pv system uh, with the utility so just keep that in mind those rules are going to definitely apply and then it goes on talking about power source conductors connecting to a microgrid system uh, the, including the conductor supply and distribution equipment shall be considered as power source output conductors. So we have all of these power sources. Again, we have the, you know, the different power sources connecting to our microgrid system. And so what this is just saying is that those are considered you know, power source output conductors. Uh, and we're gonna look at the rules in 705 to size those, protect those, have rules around loss of power and things like that. So all of those things are gonna come into apply kind of in, in short, like making sure that we're applying 705 pretty much across the board for those sets of conductors. And then 705.65, reconnection to a primary power source. So we are going to use some sort of device and we'll talk about it in the next video. We'll talk about microgrid interconnect devices, but microgrid systems that reconnect to our primary power systems shall be provided with the necessary equipment to provide that synchronous transition. So these are going to be our microgrid interconnect devices. Again, we'll have some specific requirements around those uh, that we'll talk about in a separate video. But in this type of a image, what we're looking at, this could be your, you know, small uh, home system. This could be a residential type application where you have the grid coming into your main panel and you have a solar plus storage system over there on the left hand side that's feeding some backup loads well that connection and reconnection is going to happen within that inverter uh, ess system that's going to be where that device lives and that's going to be what controls the connection and reconnection with the utility pretty common practice on larger scale systems you may see that in a through doing through some relay systems or you may do it with a motorized breaker you might do it with some contactors there's multiple ways that you can achieve this and really a big part of it comes down to is you know what would the utility or what does the utility allow for so multiple ways of doing this connection reconnection but our microgrid system has to establish that synchronous transition is one of the requirements to be truly a microgrid system and adhering to 705 for those systems. All right, so that's gonna pretty much wrap up the first part of microgrid systems in 705. In a separate video, we'll talk about the other sections as they apply to those microgrid systems for our 705 requirements. We also have other classes, you know, if you're interested in learning more about energy storage systems, we have uh, code classes, NFPA 855 classes, and other classes that we're making available on our website all the time. So I encourage you, if there's other topics that you'd like to learn more about, visit our website and you know look into signing up for those classes. All right, and if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions on this topic specifically, or if there's other code or standards that you wanna see us cover in future Code Corners, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out and let us know what you think.